Hi, I'm Gregory Heisler, and you're listening to the Podlamania Photography and Video Podcast with hosts Wayne Johns and Jake Hicks, two very top blokes. And welcome to episode 52, which is the second part of the Greg Heisler interview. Uh, We hope you enjoyed the first part. Now let's dive straight into the second part where we continue the fun. So that kind of follows on really. So when you have your subjects in front of you, before you even get in there, what do you see? And and when when you're in there and you're sort of going through all your calculations in your head and you're looking for your light and your placement of where you've got to be to light, etc. Are you... Are you after an emotional response from them? Is that, is that the power of your image? Well, that's, again, a cool thing. The sad thing is, in a way, I feel like my pictures or portraits have to be subject proof because you don't yeah. know who's going to show up, right? The person could show up and they're great. They could show up and they're hungover. They could show up and they've just had an argument with their wife. They could show up and you could be the 10th photographer that day. Like, you could have mm-hmm. a great idea. True. It's like, there are things like, Yes, you Tuesday's great idea. Yesterday was Monday's great idea and I got somebody. Tomorrow it's going to be Wednesday's yeah. great idea. You know, yeah, they just don't care. Yeah. I feel like when I don't do it well, the picture's kind of more contrived looking. When I do it well, it works mm-hmm. because when it works, I, I guess it's, it's because done the subject proof thing in a way yeah. that's not locked in as much. Like I, I would do pictures earlier on in my career. I'd show them to my wife. And she would say, well, it's a bit mm-hmm. stiff, you know, and I, and I wouldn't even uh-huh. have seen it. And she, and I got the idea that sort of like the operation was a success, but the patient died. Like the light was great. <laughs> okay. I did the Boy, thing. Yeah. But there's like no, did everything I could. It's an empty house. You know what I mean? Yeah, I get you. And that, yeah. that's <laughs> actually the thing that I sort of developed over time that took time was how to, how to relate yeah, to yeah. it. And like that sense. really needs your help. It's I, I say it every time, but quite honestly, it makes the, the, Dynamic in the room, different. you know. And I have a friend who's okay. an amazing portrait photographer. He's done a lot of time cards and other stuff. Yeah. And he says to me, he's Swiss, so his pictures are like mm-hmm. perfect. Like technically, they're perfect. That I wouldn't say they have a lot of heart, yeah. but they're like okay. amazing face maps. Like so beautiful, Rich, truly. You know, yeah. they are the topaz. Yeah. Right. His thing, honest yeah. to God, is like when I photograph someone, I never say anything to them. He said, it's their job to fill the space, not mine. And I'm like, wow, you go, dude. I can't imagine that. Some guy comes to take my picture, doesn't say anything. I I can't imagine it. Like, I don't need to be their friend. But, and I tend to be funny and nice because I'm like a chatty person, obviously. You need a, you need a, yeah, you need a rapport, don't you? But I'm not looking for funny from the person. I I just want them to be okay. Like I have my, I have a book out. Mayor Bloomberg, former mayor, wrote the, uh, the, forward to it. And I've done pictures of him for like 20 years for different things. And what he actually wrote wow. his forward on was trust. That like the most important element Amazing. is trust. He says, there's lighting, there's F-stops. Mm. He says, I don't know anything about that stuff. If there's yeah. trust, the picture always works. And that's the most important thing. And that's like, that's so, as a portrait photographer, yeah. yeah, it's really a big deal. Do you have to have it? Yeah. No. Like I said, these other people, no. And also yeah. like the person I just talked to, his pictures all look the same. So if you're a client, when you hire him, which is how people hire now, they know what they're going to get. Yeah. They don't want a surprise and yeah. he never lets them down. Yeah, does what it says but, on the tin. So how does that, how does that affect you then, Greg? Because I, like I, because you, all your images are, I would say very different and very individual in a, in a good way. Would you say you've got like a, this, this photographic style? Like, cause, cause you just said like this Swiss guy, whatever people buy into, mm-hmm. like, I know what I'm getting with this guy. This is what I want. Mm-hmm. I, you know, I, I'm, I have the trust in this photographer. This is what I'm going to get. Now with you, like sometimes you've got super, you know, cropped in just the, just the eyes and the face. And other times you've got, you know, half the, half the building in. It's like, it's, it's you know, it's like a lot of your images are very right. individual to that subject. I, it, do you see not having a cohesive style as an I don't even today? think of it or that way. Other people have said they see it. I don't mm. know what that would be. But again, first I bring up the students because they feel really pressured to have a style yeah. when they leave. Oh, that's what I mean. Yeah, so, it's, at the moment. Yeah. Yeah, it's big, big, big. I mean, what, here's how I think of it. That's, it's just my thought. But I feel like there's like vision, technique, and style, right? 
vision is like your visual DNA, like how you're born, if you're dropped on your head, what you grew up with, how you see, whatever. That's your visual DNA. And you would see that most clearly in uh, like reportage photographers or, or street like Cartier Bresson or James Knockway or Salgado. They're not using lights. They're not doing anything crazy. They're, they're, mm. What you're seeing in their pictures is their vision. There's technique, which is like using the flashes or changing white balance or whatever you're doing. That's technique. And to me, tech, a lot of people think mm. technique is style because that's the look. Of the picture, yeah. But technique is, but that's but that's what's fascinating about your work because you are the you know you're you're not that you know I'm I'm definitely a culprit of I live mm-hmm. behind my technique and my style which is behind technique and it's kind of yep. the subject for mm-hmm. thing. I can do my crazy lighting with any yep, yep. idiot in front of the camera, yeah, yeah. And it's gonna look pretty pretty cool. So I'm not relying on them to be present really. Whereas you is is like you're definitely coming at it yeah. from that different angle. You know, I think really the thing that's tricky something. with technique is that. It is a little bit like a recipe in that if someone else does the same technical things, they'll probably end up with more or less a similar looking picture, right? And yeah. usually when someone gets really hot doing that, there's a year or two where they're really doing it every, and then other people start to do it and then it becomes a thing and then it becomes not a thing, right? To me, yeah. a, a real style, that's a style would be your unique vision expressed through the unique way you use technique, right? So mm-hmm. vision kind of filtered through technique would give you your style, sort of. And where you see that's so interesting to me is in cinematographers. Like there's this guy, Chivo, Ernst Lubeski, and he won three Oscars in a row. No one had ever done that. And he did, um, I can't remember them all, but he did like, Gravity, which is like a Sandra Bullock high tech space oh, yeah. green screen thing. Yeah, I remember that one. Oh, yes, yeah. it is. Yeah. Then he that. did yeah, yeah. Um, Birdman, which is like this crazy, oh, weird yeah. thing. That's right. And then he yeah. did uh, The Revenant, which is Leo DiCaprio freezing oh, in the snow. Uh, no, yeah. Only available, I think, there's no lights well. at all. So he mm-hmm. moves through all these things, and all he's mm-hmm. trying to do is tell the story. People think of telling the story as black and white documentary work. He's telling a story Mm -hmm. for sure. The director has an idea. He's figuring out the visual language. How can I say this? Right. And his thing is, I don't want you to even give a shit about me. I'm trying to tell this story. And in a way, I feel like I I try to not foreground myself because I just think like for a recognizable stuff, like you get me for free all the time. Like I'm like, I shot the damn thing. So I don't have to like make it a thing. Do you know what I mean? In a way. Yeah. So I, I prefer that. And so, yeah, yeah. And also the hard part is it's the ADD thing. I could hit on a really cool thing. And by the next day, I'm like bored with it. I can't do it again. And a friend of mine is really funny. (laughs) Yeah, get you. He calls style self plagiarism. Like you find a thing and you do it again and again and again. It's brilliant, I think, right? Self plagiarism. I like it. Yeah. But I do, I try, I don't try to be different to be different. It's just like each thing kind of demands its very specific treatment. Yeah, I think it does. I think it does. Right, I think especially it does. With portraits, yeah, especially yeah. with people, I agree. Yeah, I, I think it's a beautiful way of looking at it. And and I, I think you're right, we're all guilty of falling into that repetitive yeah, I've, I've done it. Um, especially especially, especially yeah. in the commercial world. I mean, the yeah. truth is, yeah, for the commercial world, that's the definition of success. It's like that you deliver yeah. the goods and you're consistent (laughs) and you do it well, that's great. Like the last thing those people want is a surprise. They're not life magazine. Yeah. Like they don't want to surprise. I I almost, uh, I almost think the days that you've had, you know, where you wanted to not shoot, shoot an image for the client and shoot, you know, an experimental one for yourself for the best one. You wanted to give the client the best one. I almost think those days are almost gone now. If you, because of the speed is of the essence now as well, in a digital world. Yeah. If if you don't deliver save, save time for the yeah, BTS, no, it's yeah. Like, <laughs> BTS mm. videos as well now. Yeah. yeah. You know, if you don't deliver the goods and more goods now than we ever used Absolutely. to have to deliver in the film days, then hey, no, for sure. Back. I think it's a very different it. thing. I mean yeah. yeah. It's not the day it's not the era of the iconic picture. It's the era of like yeah. pictures by the pound almost. Like you have to provide this this yeah. stuff that's like well, it's called content. Content. Yeah, it's a shame. It, it, I mean, obviously, it's the way the world is, but it's a shame in the same sense. It though, isn't because it? iconic. Iconic is is kind of. Yeah. Is there going to be? Do you think there's going to be any more iconic? Pictures? I think there's everything. The pendulum swings for sure. 
you know, like everything yeah. now is like AR yeah. and VR kind of thing. I'm going to print up t-shirts yeah, that just say R. Like I'm good with reality. There's like, there's just a lot to do. <laughs> just, I'm really reality. cool with that. You know? yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. no, Here's really. a new one for you, but it already exists. Well, actually, when I was in that photo school, my, my last college freshman year, they didn't have a lot of guest speakers, but we had one guy at the end of the year who was the shit. Yeah. He's not a name anybody would know. His name was Rudy Muller. But okay. he was the guy who did all the booze, cars, and cigarettes. Well, like you look around magazines, billboards, it was his stuff. But they're, they're never credited, right? So nobody would know who he is. He okay. was That's the true. guy. That's true. And he came up and gave his talk and showed his pictures. And it was like, wow, like he's the first person we saw who really was like, this guy's actually doing it, you know? They had the Q&A at the end. And I was the first dope mm-hmm. who raised his hand, who asked the dumb question that everybody asked, which is, what advice would you give to a photographer starting out today? Right? Do I need to delete? I've got that. Do I need to change that? So what he said, he was quiet and he said, kid, I hate to tell you this. If I were starting out today, I'd be a set builder or makeup artist. He said, photography, the industry, it's dead. It's done. Right? Yeah. And all of us, you even saw the teachers saying basically WTF to each other. Like, oh my God, like what is this guy saying? Right? <laughs> and we get all just like shuffled out of there, staring at our shoes. Like, oh my God. But the thing is, it was over him. It wasn't over for uh, me. Uh-huh. Like the business as he knew it was beginning to cease to exist. Right. I never yeah. had that. Like yeah. a life magazine photographer back in the day would spend, John Dominus would spend months in Africa photographing leopards. Like for me, if mm-hmm. I had two hours at John Travolta's house, I was thrilled. <laughs> like that was like, that. that's great. Oh, yeah. So I never cried for the mm-hmm. career I didn't have. Do you know what I mean? Uh, and so I don't think yeah, that what's yeah, going on yeah, now putting, as true. students like, that's true. like I hate yeah. old photographers who teach because they think the business is dead and, blah, blah, and all that stuff. And they, now they do like Xeroxes uh-huh. of flowers and it's their personal work or whatever. It's like, I, I think for these <laughs> students, it, there's, it's just different. Like yeah. self-promotion yeah. now is free. There's this crazy thing called the internet. All you have to do is be savvy. Yeah, true. You don't have to print up mailers or be in books or do anything. If you're really savvy, no. you can do it. You know what I mean? And and there's way more outlets for photography. It's not just like a magazine. I agree. There's more ways to make money <laughs> yeah. just now than ever. Most of, most of them are not as lucrative and they and they require more, which no, is exactly but, what you were saying, Wayne. The deliverables are way more. But again, for them, yeah, that's yeah. their normal. It's not my normal. Yeah. It's their normal. No, and I true. just think, <laughs> yeah, I think it's very awesome. exciting. You know, and the fact is out of any class of 20 students, like f- 15 of them 10 years from now won't even be in pornography. That's always the case. You know, oh, it's just, of course. Yeah. Of course, yeah. At least. Yeah. Yeah. Even, even when I've guest lectured in the past at a fashion photography university um, locally here, you, you can look at that class and, and I've, I've said out loud to some of them before, I said, I can tell you who, by looking at you sat there listening to this um, lecture, who of you is going to make yep. it and who of you is not, purely based yep. on your interest alone. And, and you know, not even 90% mm-hmm. of the time you're right because they just haven't got the, they haven't got the get up and that's go the thing. for it. I don't want to use the word, I don't want to use the word passion, but they just have no fuel. No I mean, that's the thing you can't teach. The other thing that's a little bit in short supply is curiosity. Like you can't teach someone to mm-hmm. be curious. And a friend of mine says about students who's also mm-hmm. teacher, he says, yeah, the kids now, if there's a hundred dollar bill lying on the street, they'd be like, oh, you might have to bend and pick it up. <laughs> you know? yeah, true. Myself. And I just that's think true. that's, yeah. you can't make somebody do that. You can't teach that. But no. regardless, no. all the students in the class 10 years from now will be the best photographer among all their friends. Like they will see the world differently yeah. and they'll carry it with them for sure. Uh-huh. So it's not like, oh, they didn't yeah. become a photographer. It's like, now nah, they, you know, it's like, it, like how many people have, have English degrees and like they don't become famous writers. They actually, they <laughs> actually <so funny. laughs> have knowledge and a kind of an appreciation that no one, does, no one else can have. You know, it's, it's, yeah, yeah. it's cool. It is cool. I, yeah. I do. I think I'm, there are those days, I'm not going to lie, where I look out at the class and the, and it's like watching 20 people walk slowly backwards off a cliff and you're not saying anything. <laughs> there is, I mean, the, the business is hard for sure, right? But yeah, yeah, someone yeah, yeah. will go off the cliff and sprout wings and fly and it'll be okay. Yeah. You know, and yeah. it'll really be okay. 
<laughs> and, uh, and on that note of flying off a cliff and sprouting wings, Greg, we're, we're going to jump to, um, abruptly jump to a fun part of our show in, in a midway. And this is called the rapid fire. Not so oh my God, let me have a drink of water. This is going to be tough. Have a drink of water. I'll explain what it is. Um, so uh, for everybody listening, th- this is uh, where we, uh, in a nice way, bombard our guest with 10 random questions. Now they could be related to photography or the industry or or him or herself, or they may be not related at all. So there's a, there's a great opportunity to learn something or there's a great opportunity to learn absolutely sweet, <laughs> sweet FA. So, <laughs> so Greg, are you ready? It sounds great, but I actually have to go. I actually have to go. I'm so sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah somebody's, <laughs> not, somebody's not quite, not quite that. They're knocking not on the door. Days. Can you hear them? <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah, I'm so yeah, sorry. No. Don't worry. No, no, no lives have been harmed in the making of this episode. <laughs> I'm good. Do you play any music, musical instruments? That's so funny. So, no, I'm serious. <laughs> so when I was little, at eight years old, I played the banjo. Yeah. Because that was during what we called okay. the folk scare. Right. And yeah. and I I love it, <laughs> but I don't play it now. I still yeah. have them. But actually during COVID, during the lockdown, I was watching at night here. They have uh, pharmaceutical ads a lot. The ads are for either uh, Land Rovers or pharmaceutical ads. Yeah, yeah it's all America yeah. has pharmaceutical <laughs> so, ads. The music okay. for one of them was this fantastic Motown tune called Express Yourself. And it's a great tune. Oh, yeah. And I was like kind of doing the head thing, you know, while you listen to it. It got you going. And I went up to my computer <laughs> after that, looked up the song, and it occurred to me, I'm just a stupid person, that w- what made me kind of move my head was the bass line. I'd never paid, mm-hmm. I always thought bass was like guitar for dummies. I actually never got it at all. Really? <laughs> you know? <laughs> so no. I thought I'm going to learn this. And so literally that night I bought a bass online. <laughs> yeah. And there's, you know, there's like a oh, million no tutorials way. and stuff. And there's actually um, yeah, yeah. a guy, Scott Devine, who has like the best on the internet. It's called Scott's Bass Lessons. It's like an industry. This guy's okay. fantastic. So I do, I do that. Now that's my, now I own like six bases and I, I, I'm no, <laughs> I'm not great at it, but I super have fun. And it's also a thing you don't disturb oh, anybody in the house because you wear headphones. Totally cool. Headphones, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then actually right, a yeah. few weeks ago, I just was listening to something else. I can't remember what it was. And I just, I never wanted to do it. And, and it was just acoustic guitar. And it just seemed so uh-huh, beautiful. Yeah. So I actually started getting lessons in that. And for both things, which was cool. Sweet. I actually did a little research online. And like for the bass thing, I, I was had, getting private lessons from a woman who's like uh-huh. in the top 10 bass players in the country. But during COVID, all her gigs Whoa. were canceled. So she was giving lessons. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. How awesome is that? So mm-hmm. music has, especially recently, become a real big fo- Like I could, if I retired tomorrow, that's what I would do mm-hmm. all the time. I'd just be playing music. Because the thing that's cool is I love listening. But when you're playing it, even just the pleasure of stringing a few notes together, it's, I'm so crappy yeah. at it. It takes all my neurons to do it. So when I'm playing, it's almost like I'm in a trance. Like I actually can't ne- neurose about pictures or anything else. It kind of fills the space. You love it's, it's just, I, I recommend it <laughs> okay. to everybody. It's so cool. Yeah. I know. You, I picked up See, my guitar oh. again in lockdown and I'm like, holy crap, my, 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 yeah. hand, my, my, <laughs> my left hand mm-hmm. was so rusty. <laughs> it's like, so I restringed it with some new strings to see if it made right. it any better. Didn't, is it nylon totally. or steel string? Enthusiasm this, was this, there. This rapid fire round is going really quick, by the way. Yeah, this is a rough to a <laughs> yeah, quick yeah, start. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just going to move on. I'm just going to jump into the second one. Do you have any phobias? Phobias. Uh, heights. Actually, I, I'm, I can stay, I'm happy to hang out of a helicopter when I'm harnessed in. But like uh-huh. if I'm standing on the ladder, I'm terrified. I can't, it, no, that's so you, so you, so you're happy to trust trust strangers, but you won't. Do yeah, okay. really, cool. that's really tough. <laughs> yeah. um, what do you hate about digital photography? Um, Wait, well, not much. I, like, okay, I feel like we are speaking for you. Also, are really privileged to live in the time where we kind of have a foot in each Eat technology, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And I, early on, I was not not a fan. I. I was hoping it was like a spell of bad weather and it would pass if I just waited. <laughs> many <laughs> yeah. of us did. Yeah, many of us but, did. So I was a little resistant, I'm not going to lie. And yeah. the camera stuff is cool. Where I was having a hard time was the post-production stuff. And yeah. I was just having a hard time. It wasn't sticking for me. And I would take classes because I do all my own stuff. I don't sub it out to anybody. I actually, okay. like I always made my own prints. 
And yeah. I always do my own post because I feel like the well, cool thing about digital is more than ever, you can actually fully be the author of your own work. Like in a sense, yes. you can mix up the emulsion in developing in a way, right? You can make it contrast or dark or saturated, whatever you want to do. So you can make it yep. a thousand kinds of film right at your disposal. So that at the, at the get-go, making the images, mm-hmm. but then afterwards also how you develop it and what you do and then outputting prints. You could literally have a laptop and a little Canon Epson printer, whatever on your desk. Mm-hmm. And you can literally do everything that was never possible before. Now you can print on watercolor yeah, paper or whatever. True. Otherwise, yeah, that's true. Somebody else yeah. did stuff. And for the students, yeah. again, let's say you're <clears throat> a documentary photographer. Ideally, you should do everything. Mm-hmm. Because like, why would you take the pictures and then send the files to someone else that they then yeah. process, right? Yeah, that's yeah. crazy because you don't have control over it. So I, I actually like that. The thing with digital though, that, um, and the whole quality thing, like it's not as good as film. That's just such crap. It is. Yeah. That was like, okay, for a while you could say that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If Ansel Adams was still now. alive, he'd be all over it. Like it's, <laughs> it's, it's a different quality. It's, it's a different I think quality. it's beautiful. I really do. I love it. I, and again, I made my own prints and all that stuff. Uh, but the thing is, I don't make pictures that wish they were film. It's, to your point, it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is, th- this is what this is great at. And so yeah. I'm kind of good with that. <clears throat> and I'm not trying to make pictures that, that wish they were film pictures. But again, you can do stuff like shoot with a 10-8 on yeah. film. Yeah. Then you get to scan that and then you get to print it. Sure. So that's been a really mm-hmm. cool thing because again, as a portrait, that initial interaction with the subject, that's a big part of which camera you pick. Yeah. So at, just that dynamic, right? Like mm-hmm. people mm-hmm. see a big wooden camera, they shut up and sit straight. They do. It's like, it's a different thing. <laughs> yeah, it's true. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I like it, but the thing that's super interesting, I had this little epiphany, which was, I think with film photography, well, with digital photography, you're always looking at your last picture, mm-hmm. always. With film photography, you're always thinking of your next picture. Mm-hmm. And I feel like it's yeah. literally backward looking or forward looking. And I was watching a video of, uh, I can't remember, it was a bunch of photojournalists shooting. And it was so cool because you see them, they take a picture. And then they look around, they're looking for the next picture. They never, obviously, yeah. are not looking at the back of their camera. Yeah. And people are- Oh, I take your point. Yeah, they're always seeking yeah. the ne- next thing. The next show. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And you think with- Yeah, that's a great observation. It's a big yeah. deal. And you think with digital well, film photographers, we thought, oh, shit, this is great. Like, it's free. We can shoot as much as we want. <laughs> right? And that's what we did. Yeah. yeah, yeah. With the students, they see it and they go, oh, I got it. Time for a beer. Like, yeah, okay. they'll hand in six frames. That's all they yeah. shot because they got it. They don't think, oh, I ha-. like what we would do is I would say, oh, I've got it. What else can I do? What else can I get? Yeah. Yeah. yeah get you. So yeah. it's that curiosity thing where you say like, yeah. seeing it right away should move you to the next thing, really. Yeah. But I get do you. feel that forward looking and backward looking thing it's a good, is a good the analogy, essence yeah. of it. I, I really think it is. Yeah. Know? Yeah. And the other thing that's interesting. You can photograph, you can photograph anyone living or dead. Who would it be? Uh, the dead ones would be too disgusting. They'd be all maggoty. I don't want that. <laughs> look, disgusting. whatever yeah, you're no, into, I Greg. I mean, look, you know, I, I didn't want to judge you before we spoke. But yeah, up to you. There's a bunch of people. I mean, the contemporary person I wish I'd photographed and maybe will someday was actually Obama. Okay. He's a great subject, I know. And also, we'll never have like a good looking president again. This guy was like, <laughs> he was like a movie star, man. The guy's like, he was a good looking Oh, he's yeah. suave. He's funny. He looks great. He plays basketball. I mean, the guy's like, and he's cool. He just is a cool guy yeah. for sure. So that yeah. would have been fun. That would have been fun to photograph yeah. him. He'd be like, I would say number one, pretty much. I, I really do think so. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. I like him a lot. Sweet choice. Hmm. Is it uncomfortable sleeping on a park bench for the night? It was. <laughs> it was actually uncomfortable and filled with fear. Like one eye closed, yeah. you know? Oh, <laughs> yeah. It's pretty, pretty crazy. <laughs> crazy. Favorite camera film? Favorite camera film or camera film? I, 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 I worded it like that. So you just didn't go Terminator 2. Or no, okay. Just, <laughs> um, no, that's right. Look, what are you thinking of? I sort of don't have a favorite. Like in a way, a favorite would have been my Deardorf 8x10 mm-hmm. with a 12-inch golden dot Dagor lens, which is like a 50, be like a normal lens, right? And, uh, and I would probably use um, a Plus X or a oh, okay. Ilford, like 100 speed in there, something like that. That would probably be my favorite camera and film to work with. 
oh, you know, it actually happens. This is so cool. So a couple of years ago, my wife suggested I learn meditation. She thought it would do me some good. Suggested. Yeah. Yeah. I got yeah no, it's true. Sort yourself out. So I went. And the first thing they do, they have you like, you know, call, close your eyes and kind of think of your happy place, like that kind of thing. Right. <laughs> Which I'm, even with my eyes closed, I'm rolling my eyes. It's like, you got to be shitting me with this stuff, but okay, I'll do it. Right. <laughs> so, but I did. I actually calmed down and did it. And for most people, it's like a beach or you know, like that kind of thing. Honest God, what popped up in my head is I was under the dark cloth of the Deerdorf. And I could feel the knobs, the brass knobs, the focus knob in my hands. It's like, yeah. how fun was that? Like, I, I would never <laughs> guess that would be the thing. So, it's so cool. So I think I love that because it's very, it is a tactile process. It's yeah. very intentional. It's very deliberate when you do it. It's very studied. So I like that a lot. Yeah. If I had to pick one camera now, I have, literally the camera I shoot with is a, like a 10-year-old Canon 5D Mark III. I don't even have the latest stuff. And it's like, you can literally shoot anything, anything. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So if I were going to- yeah. Anything made in the last- So if I were going to go around the world, I'd probably take a camera like that yeah. and a 28 shift lens or 24 shift oh, lens. Nice. That's my favorite. Really? Nice. I feel like I can shoot anything with that. You know how street photographers, most of them like a 35 or a 28. Uh, it's kind of that, mm -hmm. but you can also be very studied with it, which is cool. Like it's like having an itty bitty eight by 10. So that can be pretty yeah. cool. That's okay. yeah, so, nice. so you're a big fan of the old tilt shifts on the 35 mil. So my, my kit that I would take, mm -hmm. unless I'm hiring like medium format stuff and, and all that, that'd be different. Sure. But what I would take as a thing in my bag is actually two Canon bodies, DSLR mm -hmm. bodies, the 24 tilt shift, the 45 tilt shift, the 90 tilt shift, Okay. And a 24 to 105 that I usually use more for scouting. But basically yeah, my, yeah. my lenses that I shoot with would be those oh, three. Shift, it's like points. having a view camera. Yes. I'm actually using it like a view camera. Right? And you shoot portraits on that? Like on the, on oh, the my tilt shifts? A lot of them have been that. Yeah. yeah. And that's an Arnold thing. That's an Arnold Newman thing. Uh, okay. Four by five, right? He, that's what he would do. And I'm, yeah, yeah. I've only dabbled in it, but yeah, I've never had uh, one. We should so. talk about it. I'm not kidding you. Really, really we should have a conversation. Yeah, yeah. Seriously. It's like super, I think it's super cool. But also now that I'm in my declining years, my, I've got shaky, kind of shaky hands. It's like a hereditary thing. Uh -huh. So I have a little bit of a hard time, frankly, hand holding now. I can do it, but it's okay. like, not great. So a lot of times I'm on a tripod and, oh, okay. but that puts me for portraits. It puts me in the mode of Arnold and Richard Avedon. Yeah. Where it's on the yeah. tripod. I'm standing next to it with the cable release. It has... True. A tilt yeah, shift, which is like a five, you know, the, that thing. So that would be the, the mix. Okay. If you suddenly decided to embark on a new career path, of course, we know that's not going to happen. But if you did, what would it be? Well, I'm on one now, which is the educator thing. The educational side. That's yeah. super duper. I mean, and I'm... Oh, so you see that as a, as a different career path? Oh my God. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I mean, when they interviewed me here... They said two questions. Funny. They said, uh, why are you here? Why do you want to be here? And I said, like, I want to be the dumbest guy in the room. That's why I want to teach at a university. I think it'd be awesome. I want to learn a lot, you know? But the other thing was, I felt like they would say like, oh, you know, of course we want you to keep shooting your time covers. And yeah, I said, yeah, honestly, that's, that's up to you. Like if I get a call on Monday to shoot on Tuesday, is that cool? And they said, well, uh, we could get somebody to cover you. And I said, I don't want somebody to cover me. I'm like I want to see the last. And they said, well, you know, if you had some notice a week or two, then we could figure something out. I said, well, A, Oh, that time, no. I don't get yeah. that. Like Sports Illustrated doesn't call. And I say like, just the Olympics every four years. I don't really, don't bother <laughs> me with anything else. Unless you have something on a Sunday, a month in advance and it's nearby. Like, <laughs> don't even. No, and I just said like, they, they'll they <laughs> yeah. call the first time I can't do it. And the second time I can't do it. And the third time I can't do it. And after that, they they say, yeah, wow, no, Greg's no, teaching. That's really cool. Go. And they just yeah. move on, you know? And I expected that. So the part of the goal of teaching was to get into the academic year rhythm where basically in the summer months I'd be photographing projects and then in the hibernating months is when I'd be there on the computer in the dark room and I, mm -hmm. I'd, I would think I'd be able to do like in a sense a little body of work a project every year I've never done that like it's not like oh. it's not like with the mag magazine covers been there done that in a jaded way yeah. but at this point 
if I got hit by a bus, I wouldn't be sad that I didn't shoot another magazine cover. I'd be a little sad that I didn't get around to doing this stuff. So that's kind gotcha. of what it is. But as a separate okay. career, yeah, yeah. it would be music for sure. Yeah. I love okay. it. Oh my God. It's so, yeah. like I can do it endlessly. It's just super fun. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. I just, I, nice. you know, super fun. Never too late, as they say. <laughs> well, again, it, favorite place on earth, Greg. Pardon? My favorite place on earth? Favorite. Favorite place on earth is between my ears. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> but, oh, I thought you were going to say between yeah, no. your legs, but that's no. fine. Yeah, no, 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 no that's, that's the, the general deep. public would say that. I wouldn't say that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah, I don't. Um, I don't know if I could earn a living with it, but I've never had any complaints. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> uh, do you have a favorite bow tie? No, I have. I do have a lot of them. They are. Some, they are self tied. They're not clip ons. Oh, they are? No, they're, they're so, I have to tie them all, yeah, for sure. It, and how many do you have? That's the question, hundreds. I, a lot. I mean, I don't think a hundred, but a bunch. Okay. I mean, I don't know, 50, 80, yeah. maybe a hundred, I don't know, a lot. But then again, that's over like 30 years. That's like two or three bow ties Stop a year. Stop justify it, Greg. It's absolutely yeah. fine. This is yeah. fine. Your secret's I love with us. I do love them. <laughs> totally normal. It's, it's totally a fun normal. thing. And it gets me in the mood. It does, quite honestly. Yeah. Fun. I don't wear them in the shower. One thing though, you would... <laughs> Wow, thanks for that image, Greg. Brilliant. That's another Actually, that's nice. the thanks only thing that. I wear in the shower. Appreciate yeah. it. Buddy. That's the only thing yeah, you wear in the shower. Yeah, but I don't tie it around my neck. Yeah. Good job. That's the only thing you didn't wear to the interview, yeah. that's for sure. <laughs> right. <laughs> One thing you wish you knew before you started your career. So here's the thing it's a, it's a serious thing is it never occurred to me that I always thought that photography as a profession was a meritocracy. Like they hire you because your pictures are better than someone else's, right? It's not. I think it meant, like I had an agent who's a terrific guy. And he said, like, we're really lucky because we're in a profession where quality matters. Like what your work looks like as opposed to someone else. He said, but that's not the main thing. The main thing is relationships. And I never actually uh, cultivated relationships. And I thought, wow, you missed out my pictures? Really? And he's, he's, yeah, he said true, basically yeah. like in any other business, like the guy who does the best cement doesn't get hired because his cement's the best. He gets hired because <laughs> he gives the people tickets to the football game or a kickback mm -hmm. or, you know, it's a million other reasons, right? Or they go to yeah, the same yeah. country club or something like that. The deal is though that I was thinking about myself in that way. If I have to hire like a makeup artist for a portrait, I could look at a hundred makeup artist portfolios and all I would be looking at would be the pictures. Like, oh, I can't believe he lit it that way or ah, oh, what a, you know, I'd just be uh, looking at the well. photographs. I wouldn't actually necessarily know what was the better makeup solution that that person did. So more often than not, what I'll do if I have something, I would call someone who I know who works with a lot of people like that. And I would say, I have to do a picture of Julia Roberts. Who do you think would be good for that? I have to do this. And they would say, oh, so-and-so. And I would just go with that. Right? Because oh, yeah. I, yeah. I trust that. Getcha. And it would be the same if I'm hiring an assistant. I probably wouldn't go by the resumes. I would call another star and say, hey, who have you worked with lately who's really good? You know? And the truth is, I think that's a lot of how photographers get hired. Is somebody in an ad agency yeah. leans over to the cubicle next to him and says, yeah, I need a portrait guy. And the guy says, Heisler. And the guy says, Schmeisler, Beisler, I don't know. Was he, is he good with people? I don't know. What does he do? <laughs> yeah. And they'll call my portfolio just, just on that recommendation. Yeah. And once you get there, obviously you have to do the good job. Yeah. But I think That's it is true. really based on relationships way more than I ever thought. Yeah. That's one thing. And the second thing I wish somebody had told me is that you have to be a business person. Like it's a business. Mm, yeah. I mean, yeah. honestly, the, I was in business for like two years maybe. And I'd lost all my credit cards. Totally. I didn't know what was wrong. And I hired an accountant for the first time. And he looked at my stuff for a day. And he says, like five o'clock, he sat me down. And he's from Brooklyn. He said, kid, your problem is <laughs> your business is just like a submarine with screen doors. <laughs> he, said. he said, your problem is you don't have a problem making money. You have a problem making it stick to your ribs. And he explained <laughs> it to me at the time. Like, let's say I work for Life Magazine every single day, including Sundays. Yeah. They were paying 
at the time, $250 a day, say, for a rate, but let's say it's $300 a day. Mm-hmm. That'd be $9,000 in a month, right? Yeah. My overhead at that time was almost $30,000 a month. So the first oh. month, I'm 21,000 in the hole. The second month, I'm 42,000 in the hole. The third, right? That's the submarine with screen doors. I'm sinking, sinking, sinking. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. just didn't get it. Like didn't think nobody that. ever sat me down and said, here's what you need to do. And nobody said like- I'm, I'm working hard. I'm working hard every day. I'm getting paid. Like, yes, I say, I still have checks in my yeah. checkbook. There must be money, you know? But, yeah. <laughs> yeah. but I really didn't, yeah. I didn't get that. Or to think, oh, if I make, for every dollar I make, you know, 30 cents or 50 cents goes to the government. Like I just think, oh, I yeah. have a dollar. I can spend a dollar. I'm good. Spend a dollar. Yeah. People forget that part of it. So they? I just. Yeah. That, that dollar's not all yours. No. So it's all that stuff. Right. And the other yeah. thing I will say that I've learned as a lesson for me is anytime I've tried to like chase money, it has eluded mm-hmm. me. And when I've actually just been really happy making pictures, mm-hmm. it worked out okay. It really okay. did. That was for me, at least. You know, for yeah. sure. Yep. Yeah. Wow. There you go, Greg. That's your 10 questions. Was that it? Hey, oh, they did, went fast. Did it seem like 10 quick questions? Quick Greg. Just gone. Wow. Okay. Wow. I think, that's, I think that's the longest 10 question round we've almost had. I mean, yeah. Let's, yeah let's, uh... <laughs> this has taken forever. If I had six months to about want to spend it with you guys, it'd feel like a lifetime. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, we, 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 we got a whole chapter on music there. You'll be happy with <laughs> <laughs> um, Okay. Back, back, back to it then. Let, let's... Um, Move on quickly with this. Let's let's just talk about lighting for a second mm-hmm. and the the pretense of all the gear, no idea kind of label. What do you think the misconception is with lighting with young or new photographers of today? What do you think they're doing wrong? I think the most important thing is what I teach here is you have to have an intention mm-hmm. at the outset. I think go. You have to have a clear intention of what you want to do. It's like, yeah. what store do you have there? Do you have like Home Depot or? Those kind of things. Similar sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, similar sort of thing. So it's like, if you go into one of those, you could buy, you could buy paint, you could buy a snowblower, you could buy barbecue, you could buy lumber, you could get anything, toilets, whatever you want, right? And you could just get lost and you could spend hours there, right? Yeah. If you're trying to build like a birdhouse, you go in there and you buy like a little bit of wood, some nails, a hammer, a bit of paint, and you're back in your car in 10 minutes, right? Because actually the other 50,000 things there are irrelevant. So it's like lighting wise, it's the same. If you don't have an intention, then you're looking at people reviewing shit online and which one's better. And yeah. you know, it's all that. And it's ridiculous. And the yeah. truth is you have to know. You're just like, I, I try out all the stuff. Like I had a studio for 40 years, right? Yeah. I would say in that 40 years, I shot 10 jobs actually in the studio. In the studio. But honestly, yeah, I'm, I'm, like studio an, anymore. I'm like an idiot. I thought I had to have a studio. But what I did use yeah. it for was testing stuff, trying stuff out. Sometimes we yeah. test out lighting that we then recreate on the road. But sometimes it'd be like for the 8x10, it's like, well, is the 12 inch lens better? Or do I actually like the 14? Mm-hmm. Or like for the 8x10? Asking the real questions, right? No, there, really. Yes. And same for, same for <laughs> lighting, same for everything. Like when I bought a digital yeah. bag, that's like you can own a car, right? Mm-hmm. So I'm not going to look at what people yeah. say because just to, what they like might not be what I would like. Just as simple as that. Yeah, true. So I went true. to like my little favorite camera store and I said, at the end of the day, I'm going to walk out with one of these. I'm going to yeah. set up my camera in a light. My assistant's here. I want to try every single one of these. Every single, and I shot with every single back he had, took him back to the studio, looked at him. And it was like the taste test, the blindfold taste test. Mm-hmm. And for me, immediately the one stood out and that's the one I got. And, yeah. and it's like lighting is the same. So it would totally depend on what the shoot was. It really yeah. would like, does it require a lot? Does it require a little? Is the person going to be overwhelmed with the lights or they're cool with the lights? For some jobs, you want to bring stuff. It sounds ridiculous because it impresses the client. They think you have a lot of shit. I mean, honestly, yeah. from what I understand, like Annie had stuff like that. Like you go to LA and everybody was out of everything because she was there. There's nothing left. No, I'm serious. I'm not kidding. I had experience like that. But like that, there's that. Or it could be that you want to do something very low key. And actually, yeah. I think I teach here, the reason at Home Depot. So I did a shoot a very long time. It was a corporate shoot. The CEO, mm-hmm. white guy wearing a tie kind of thing. And it was in, I don't know, South Carolina or somewhere. I had my lights and my cameras and all my stuff. Assistant. I didn't have an assistant. It was for a magazine. So it wasn't a budget. Mm-hmm. And um, Oh, yeah. Flew out of New York, 
early in the morning, connect through Atlanta to go to South Carolina. And I land there and none of my lights made the connection. Oh shit. So I have like two hours of life to shoot this guy and then I'm not going to have any lights. I wake up in cold yep. sweats thinking about you. <laughs> so I had hired a, a local assistant to just yep. have extra hands down there. And there's, it, w- it was a town that didn't have like a rental hire house, kind of something like that. Right? And I asked him, is there a Home Depot? And like there was. So we drove there. I went in the back where the lights were and I bought like a fluorescent lights that was like the yeah. four foot standard that you'd hang over your workbench kind of thing, right? Yeah. I bought that and we went to shoot the guy with that, right? And it was, it's a beautiful strip light. It's kind of like strip light. Profoto makes a strip light that's the same as that. It's like $3,800. You took it about yeah. a yeah. yeah. mm-hmm. thousand times more expensive. Yeah. yeah. And you have to plug it into a pack that costs $5,000, right? But anyway, I had that. <laughs> Obviously, it doesn't fit on a stand. We don't have any light stands. She so assistant uh-huh. handheld the light while I photographed this guy. Okay. And the guy wouldn't have thought like, oh my God, this guy's a clown. I think he thought I was really discerning because I had to have the guy <laughs> handhold this light and move it. <laughs> yeah. Every, all the other clowns have soft boxes and umbrellas. I was there. It's like, wow, yeah. it's so cool. I took these pictures. I gave the assistant the fluorescent lights. I was going to bring it back. And it was $34, literally. <laughs> and I went home. This is all shown. And, pu- right? yeah, and they published it. As a cover. It was great. And to me, it was such a revelation. It's like, not like, oh, you don't need fancy lights, but you can really do it. Like the four foot floor, it's a four foot soft light, the same as a four foot flash soft, except it doesn't flash. But in a sense, the light quality is beautiful. So for the students, we work with those first lights that you buy at Home Depot. We have them in the studio. I have a Home Depot shopping list for them. After the first day, they all go out and buy them because yeah. they can set that up in their bedroom at home. It's like, it's and like have thousands a, of dollars. Yeah, and also the good thing about those lights to learn lighting, call me crazy, is you can actually see the light. That's kind of a good idea. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm serious. Yeah, like, you get. Especially when you start. Yeah, yeah. You have a speed light. Like you, can't, you have no idea what you're doing. So you can no, see no. it. And, and immediately <laughs> they start taking really beautiful portraits. It's really yeah. cool. Because you can see it's not... You also... If you have a five thousand dollar light in your hands, you're going to be very yeah. tentative and careful. This thing, you don't give a shit. Like you move it around and here and there. And just, yeah. just try stuff. Seriously, it's great. Yeah. yeah. So it's, it really is that. I feel like. Yeah. If yeah. you have an intention, it's simple. If you're just yeah. buying lights or getting stuff because you saw a, t- a review or a tutorial or you heard that's what Annie Leibovitz uses or you heard that's what yeah. somebody else uses, it's it can't work, right? Like. Tons of photographers have a way they light stuff. And it doesn't mm-hmm. matter if it's a famous athlete or an AIDS patient or whatever it is. They just do their thing. That's yeah. great. Yeah. It's great until you get to the thing where that won't work. Yeah. Then you're kind of screwed. It's and it's all, you're screwed also when, when people get tired of seeing that picture. Yeah, and they yeah, generally, yeah. at some point, sooner or later, they will. They will get tired. And I feel like if you just know what you want to do and think about it hard, It'll be clear. Yeah. The other way to look at lights, I will say this. I'm a terrible person. I don't carry a camera around with me. I, I just don't. Because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. if I do, I'm, I'm lost. Like then I'm taking pictures. <laughs> you know, like we go on vacation <laughs> yeah. Yeah. and my wife would be so pissed off. It's like, look, I'll see you on the plane. Knock yourself out. Because <laughs> like I'm <laughs> making pictures. It's not fun for Yeah. It's not fun. See you in a week. <laughs> so, but what I do do, do do now is I look around and I feel like my eyes will go click. I'll, I'll see okay. something. And particularly with light. Light's a big thing for me. I'll notice it. And so- Can't turn it off, man. Yeah, so, it's, it's a curse sometimes. It really can be. Well, actually the light on you, like you're getting sort of a blue kick in your eyes from the computer, I'm guessing. Oh, that's totally by accident. Yeah, but, I, didn't, I didn't just set this up. No, no, but I mean, it's like very beautiful. <laughs> it's very cool light. Like the color's cool. It's cool. So I would look at that. And like, if I see light that's great on somebody, I would look and say, oh, that's coming from a window that's like three feet by six feet. Mm-hmm. And it's about four feet uh-huh. away. I go into the studio. I get a three foot by six foot softbox and it's four feet away. That's the light. Yeah. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Or I'll be in a bar and I see really great light on the bartender know, coming from yeah. underneath. Yeah. It's like, yeah. I'll look and see what it is. You look like it's such a That's what I'm going to yeah. do. Do you know what I mean? So it's like. Yeah, yeah. And when you, you're seeing it first. Yeah, and when you yeah. look at movies, that's what they do. Yeah, like they yeah, mostly yeah. are recreating something that exists. And the See, cinematographer yeah. has paid attention to that. And, and they know that, oh, that lighting in the bar, I need this light with that gel, with this thing, with that thing. And then it looks like light in the bar. 
Do you know what I mean? And that, yeah. but that's an intention based on a thing. They don't use the light because they think it's cool. I, I think it's a, a good lesson because there's, you know, there's so many people driven by marketing and advertising now that, you know, they're going out and buying the latest kit because they've been told it's the greatest, yep. the latest and greatest, and everyone's using it. And hey, everybody needs that because it's the best. Yep. Yeah, for for all our listeners, you, it's not the case. You know, you've got to learn light in any light. You can learn with any light. So go to your Home Depot store if you're here in the UK, your B and Qs and your tools. Just to mess around, just try it. Buy some cheap lights mm-hmm. to mess around. I mean, literally yeah. a month so ago, you can do. I flew to Chicago out for a, like a family thing and my niece got mm-hmm. married and I went last year and I thought it'd be nice to make a portrait of she and her husband just mm-hmm. as the wedding present. But with COVID, I didn't travel there. So I went and I brought stuff to make their portrait. And so I went to their house and what I was using is actually cool. They're little Profo B10s, Profoto B10s. They're really small. They're beautiful little yeah. lights, right? Compact. Yep. So I took, I, first of all, I hadn't been out in a long time. I was up all night the night before pack. I ended up packing like six cases of stuff, lights. <laughs> and then it hit me like, I won't be able to get through the airport with this. Like from there to the rental car, like I can't do this on my own. No. So I thought, okay. And <laughs> I spent can't do it. four hours getting down to one case. Then I thought about this. It's not now like three in the morning, four in the morning, right? My flight's <laughs> at seven. <laughs> okay. And I think of it, I weigh it. And it's like 85 pounds and the limit is 50. Oh, shit. So then I spend the next two hours taking stuff out. I'm narrowing my options. So what I end up with is the two little pro photo B10s and, and stands and yeah. some other stuff. Right? So it's great. I go to their house. They're both sort of artistic characters. So their house is good. So it's like a good opportunity for sort of an Arnold Newman picture. The environment the place is, mm-hmm. says a lot about them. Mm-hmm. It's not like Ikea yeah, furniture. Yeah. It's like something that means something here and there and all that. So, I see the picture right away, sort of like what it's going to be, right? Mm -hmm. And they're in a sense framed like you are, Wayne, with the background, that background. It kind of just fits, right? So I get the camera set. It is the 24 tilt shift, as it turns out, right? Mm -hmm. I have, I know where they're going to be. It's sort of a a picture that's very structured they're going to be in. Actually, I want to mention something about that in a minute, but I get all set. I go to get the lights to set it up. I set them up. It's great. But then there's a little transmitter that goes on the camera. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's nowhere to be seen. Oh, you forgot. Oh, yeah. no. It rolled off the table. It's pro photo connects like a little round thing rolled off the table. I don't know. So I have all these I mean, lights. Yeah. I just set them up. I can fire them. <laughs> so now I have to make an available light picture with what's yep. there. And I have to not, and I have to be calm. Oh, I, I just, I got that feeling in my stomach when you oh. said that. Then. But I literally, over the years, <laughs> Jake's color drain out of when it. that happens. <laughs> I assisted yeah. photographers who would go apeshit in a situation like that, or just, yeah. or whatever. They just get, they lose their game, really. Yeah. Over the years, I've sort of gotten this feeling when something like that happens, I think it's a gift. And it's like, okay, I have to hang a left now, but I'm going to now make a picture I would never have made before. This is yeah. like, Okay, it's an opportunity. Good way of looking at it. Yeah. yeah. Well, you can't, otherwise I'm like, I'm screwed. So I yeah. was like, <laughs> yeah, you could look at it that screwed, way. Yeah. No, but seriously, <laughs> yeah. it's like, okay. So what's the picture I had, didn't see before? Quite literally. Yeah. And what I did is move their lights around uh-huh. and it ends up being a really nice picture. It was fine. You know, so I just think it's a- If in doubt, just turn it black and white. Yeah, that'll work. <laughs> that'll work too for sure. That'll save it. That will work too for sure. But yes, it's really a matter of being like very- Nimble. I think being nimble yeah. is a good thing mm. for that, for lights. Yeah. Being able to adapt. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What is your stance on film? I know we spoke a little bit about, you know, your relationship with digital and film early on, but, you know, do you still shoot film today? And, you know, does it, do you, do you use it as a teaching tool with your new students? Very sad. The year before I got here, they ripped out all the dark rooms. Uh, oh, really? That's really? tragic. Yeah, that's it really is tough. There are two colleges within this university that teach photography. The one I'm in is called the Newhouse School of Public Communications. Uh, Cy Newhouse, the Newhouse family, provided big money for it. They're the people who run Condé Nast, right? Like Vogue and all those. So, yeah. And so this is like news, journalism, also public relations, advertisements, public communications, what it is, right? The other college mm-hmm. that offers it is VPA, Visual and Performing Arts. And that's, in a sense, fine art photography. And I personally think they should roll them into one thing. That division is so old now between fine art and commercial. That's like, you know, now you could be a photographer who shoots conflict and your pictures are exhibited in a gallery and bought. And if you want to do something crazy like 
you know, buy a house, own a car, have kids, you will do a commercial shoot, right? And people will hire you because you're like a legit journalist. So those distinctions are, are gone for sure, I think. And so that school, the fine arts school, does still have dark rooms, but we don't have access to them. That's for their thing. And it's the fine arts school. But like, here's Arnold Newman. Great thing. Mm. He hated the fine art thing. He was like, oh, they call themselves a fine art photographer, for Christ. You wouldn't call you the title. Yeah, you wouldn't call yourself a fine art painter or a fine art sculptor. You're just a goddamn painter or sculptor. How come photographers are so insecure (laughs) on their business cards? Says, fine, I'm a fine art photographer. Like, what the hell's wrong with you? Why would you do that? Just take the damn pictures and let everybody else decide. You know, you wouldn't be a fine art sculptor. You would be a damn sculptor, which it's like true, right? So cute. But it's true, yeah. But the difference between the two schools, I think, which is actually really an interesting one, is audience. Like in the fine art program, you're making pictures for an audience of one. It's yours. Yours, Mm -hmm. yeah. In in mass communications, public communication, you have an audience of millions or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. So it's it's a very different thing. It's the difference between writing a diary or writing a novel, right? The diaries for you, the novels, in a way. So, mm-hmm. and I always felt like sort of the higher calling is the big audience. Like I was that audience. You know, if I have a show in a gallery, 200 people come to the opening and then whoever comes after that. The cool thing is they're all yeah. really pre- predisposed to be interested in my work. That's cool. If I shoot a picture yeah. for Sports Illustrated, millions of people see it who don't give a shit about my photography at all. But all of a sudden they see the pictures, right? I was that yeah. guy growing up, right? I saw Life Magazine. I didn't know anything about anything. So you get to run your pictures under the eyeballs of people who don't care. To me, that's the cooler thing is to actually reach that many people. I think it's really super cool. So, so the darkroom yeah. thing, that was your question is, I'm not at the moment shooting film. Yep. I have at home all the equipment from right. my darkroom in the city. And my intention is to rebuild that and to mm-hmm. actually resume shooting with my 10.8 processing the film. I have, it's a Jobo processor. It's a great little automatic oh, film okay. processor. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I yeah, yeah, yeah. So I have the fit, that thing, the Jobo, and then I will have my darkroom to either make silver prints, platinum prints, or I might scan them. I, cause I made platinum okay. prints for a while and I okay. love that. I still have all the stuff for that. Yeah. So, it's beautiful platinum yeah. prints. So, yeah. but again, would be why the most important thing to decide ahead of time is why, why platinum mm-hmm. print, why the 10, eight, why film it all? Why, you know, it'd be all that. Yeah. My question would be, why not? Jesus. It's a good one. So here's <laughs> the not? thing. So yeah. do you know Jay Maisel? He's like a fantastic photographer. He just turned 90. He's one of the really seminal color photographers, kind of 35 millimeter color. Yeah. And he's a, he's a really good friend. And his thing was a great quote. He says, man, I like to just go out empty and let the world fill me up. It's like, I can't argue with that. Well, That's a beautiful thing. No, yeah. no, it's a beautiful statement. Yeah. I can't do that. With it. I, if I don't have an intention, it's the ADD thing. Oh, bird, truck, car, ADD cloud, thing. sunset. Oh, look at that. Oh, here's a detail, leaf. And I'm just, that's why my wife wants to see me on the plane. You know what I mean? Okay. But, and I find for me, if yeah. I have an intention, even a little one, then yeah. I make pictures. Like if I, my intention is red cars, all of yeah. a sudden I start noticing all the red cars. And I start true, noticing the yeah, kind of true. people that drive red cars and how fast they drive. Like you just start giving kind of, yourself a mini project there. Yeah, just yeah. a little yeah. intention. And all of a sudden you're, yeah. you're more sensitive to that stuff. And I think that that's better. Yeah. And, and you do that with kit as well. You can go, right, I'm only going to shoot macro shots or something. Totally. Like, you know, so, yeah, so, yeah. So yeah. You're, you're looking yeah. at a different. I actually did that when I learned platinum printing because it's a contact printing process, right? Yeah. I thought it'd be oh, cool to shoot yeah. everything one to one, because then when you looked at the print, you'd actually be looking at the thing the size that it really is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's true. So for portraits, I had a, a wooden eight by ten camera, mm-hmm. and I literally locked it in the focus at one to one. So the way I would shoot is I'd literally move it closer to the yeah, person it was, until it was in focus. I wouldn't focus it; the gotcha. focus was locked, and I would do that. <sighs> And then I shot uh, objects like little still life things clever. or even a little clever. thing I would see on the st- street. I would just move in. So instead of being clever with lights and lenses, I was like locked mm. into that. And gotcha. it was like yeah, having blinders on. And then the prints mm. were, contact prints were like the thing at yeah. the size that it is. One to one. Yeah, that's cool. Okay. And so that was just a fun yeah. little project, you know? 
It's cool. Yeah. I'm not. I'm, yeah. I mean, those one to one, I mean, they would look great on your phone, of course, but I mean, though, you had to physically <laughs> yeah. be there to see them. <laughs> right. <laughs> then on the phone, you can only get like a nostril or whatever, right? One to one. Yeah. It's got to be one to one. Yeah. I like it. I like it's it. It's got to be one to one. Yeah. 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 That's funny. Okay, maybe you know we're we're getting closer to wrapping up the show now. So, is is it true that you had your White House photographer privileges revoked after photographing George Bush? Yes, it is true. Yeah, I did a uh, portrait <laughs> wow. of him for Time has Person of the Year. It used to be Man of the Year, yeah. was Person of the Year, and he was yeah. that kind of the the brief, as you were saying, was that as Person of the Year. Time does as like the most newsworthy Person of the Year. Person had the most yeah. impact on the news, and it was George H. W. Bush, first one. And the idea was that he sort of there's sort of this dichotomy where he was sort of thought of as sort of a foreign policy visionary, but kind of ineffective domestically somehow. Mm-hmm. So I thought it'd be cool to do a picture of him that literally was two faces, not an original idea, but I thought it'd be cool. This is all pre-digital. I shot it on five four, and I did it in my studio, tested it out. Because it had to be okay. right. Two cameras side by side. I photograph him with one. I'd sketch out where his face was on the ground glass with like a China marker. Mm-hmm. Then sit in the other one, make sure it lines up, and then take the picture. So I'd, you, I'd re-expose the same sheet of film, right? So I'd... Okay. Wow. okay. So when I did, did that, we took very precise measurements of what's where. Then when we got to Washington, I rented a studio the day before and reset mm-hmm. it up to make sure I could reset it up same because it's tricky for sure yeah and i had the idea there to actually we rolled out seamless paper on the floor and literally with like a sharpie we went around where all the lights were where the camera was all of that right yeah yeah, yeah. we rolled it up sometimes when you get to the white house they delay you so we had like 20 cases a year and we're supposed to shoot them and i always ask for like two hours in advance just to set up i don't mind if i have five minutes to make sure i have to be ready right yeah cool Except with the bomb sniffing dogs and the, you know, x-rays and all that stuff. We got in with like 10 minutes before he shows up. What's good is we actually rolled out the paper on the floor and like bam, bam, (laughs) bam, bam, put all the stuff in. (laughs) Nice. And then he comes in and we take the picture and it worked. It like re-exposed and re-exposed 12 sheets of film. That's what we did. Yep. And I did one of each separate. Again, not to Photoshop because there wasn't Photoshop, but but to have. Yeah, yeah. So, um, we processed the 12 sheets and some were perfect and some not, not. There was one that was really mm-hmm. the one that lined up just right where like his, his nose wasn't in the middle of his ear, you know, on the second picture. The facing in different yeah. directions. Again, other people have done that, but I thought it was a good solution for that. And that's what ran us the cover is that these right. two faces. And I thought it was a really good solution. And both faces were lit really beautifully. I mean, it nice. was, it was really nice. But he saw it. A lot of people saw it as like a backhanded compliment, really, you know. Uh, and what's well, two-faced, no matter how you slice it, but that really wasn't the idea. The idea, yeah. And I went back maybe I don't, when when Clinton got in, right, after that. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of my early assignments was to photograph Hillary at the White House. Yeah. So I went in. I went there to do it. You get your ID at the, at the gate, and the, the little <laughs> soldier there looks and says, Sir, I, your security has been declined. I was like, he said, I said, do you mind? Like I paid my taxes. I think everything's good. He said, well, I'll run it through again. And he did. And he said, somebody's definitely pulled your clearance. I can't let you through. Right. And I was like, what the hell? And I literally, it's the only time I ever didn't take the picture. Like I had, I went back to New York with all my stuff. Right. The writer was there and I said, wow, if you can, can you find out like, what's the deal with that? Yeah. Yeah. And apparently talked to the uh, press person and the press person said, the president was really steamed about that picture. You're not coming back in. That was it. Whoa. And I just thought, wow, like he has that bigger fish to fry than me. And also, I feel it was context. Like, if it, the headline was, he's he, he's like two people in one. He's twice as great as any president we've ever had. Two faced he, He's ever something vigilant. Like yeah. Something positive. He would have asked for a framed copy. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, of course he would. Because of what it was not. So that was like a, shocking to me. Yeah, I was banned Shit. from the White House. Holy crap. Yeah. And that's and that's permanent? Like, you know, it's not like... No, I got back in after that. You got back in? Okay. Yeah, sometime New later. Yeah, was, in. yeah, with Clinton later. It was actually funny because... Did you ever see the movie The Butler? It's about this guy who worked at the White House for de- generations and generations. I think uh, Forrest Whitaker was the guy. But anyway, 
I went in okay. and I do wear the bow tie. I usually wear a fedora. That kind of thing. And one of the cooks recognized me. He said, hey, man, how's it going? And I said, wow, you're still here? He said, yeah, I'm never leaving, you know? And I said, well, it's good to be back. You know, I kind of got banned. And he was like, yeah, they come, they go. Don't worry about it. <laughs> right? Brilliant. Wow. So Brilliant. off the cuff as well. Brilliant. Yeah. Yeah, they come. Okay, they go. great. Right. Brilliant. Let's get this last question out for you because we know at times um, running short for you. Let's look at this. You've had 70 covers for Time Magazine. Appro- or over Approximately covers. 74, but who's counting? Okay. Okay. Yeah, I stand corrected yes. and rightly so. Um, do you think that type of career can exist for a photographer in today's world? I'm, I'm not sure. My mm. guess is that an equivalent, an equivalent one might ha- happen. Yeah. I don't know the form that I'm honestly don't know the form that it would take. The reason I'm saying that is that what's different now is someone before would hire me to take a portrait in New York, a portrait in Sri Lanka, a portrait in Moscow, a portrait wherever, right? Now, they can very easily find a terrific photographer in Sri Lanka and a terrific photographer in Moscow, right? Yeah. It's a little sad for me because I'm not going yeah. there. It's, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. awesome for the Sri Lanka photographer and the Moscow photographer, right? So yeah, a plus mean? is that like when I was shooting, you had to live within like a block of a, E6 color lab to process the film. And you had to be in Manhattan. If you're in Brooklyn, you might as well have been in Siberia, right? That's yeah, always what yeah. it was. Now you can live on a ranch in Montana. And as long as you have Wi Fi, you can shoot any. Yeah. You can really can. Like people will hire That's you. True. It's fine. So true. At, and Instagram is free and all that. So I think, I think a different kind of career will, will is existing now than what I had. Hmm. And I don't know that people will have a client that will be that that loyal or steady because I think what mm, happens and it was starting to happen already. If you do a great job, instead of saying, wow, that was great. Let's, let's work with Heisler again on this next one. They would say, wow, that was great. I wonder what Wayne would do. Cause it's like a kid mm, in a candy store. Yeah. There's so many photographers yeah. and, and frankly, so many. a lot of really good ones. Why wouldn't you? Are. Yeah. 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 So much choice. But, yeah. Yeah. But I think I do really think a great career is still possible. I think it's a different one. And if you're not the person who shot the iconic covers, you're not missing it. It's fine. No, it's been you know, and also students get, yes. get confused. Like they'll look at all the photo books. It could be Cartier-Bresson. It could be Avenon, whoever. And then they look at their yeah. pictures and think, oh, you know, I'll, I'll never be able to do that. But the thing is, when you're looking at their work in the books, you're looking at their greatest hits. Yes. When you're looking at your <laughs> take in Lightroom and you're seeing the whole thing and it's a picture of your boyfriend or girlfriend, like, no, it's not going to be that. But these guys all took really shitty pictures. You just never see them. Yeah, we all do. Yeah, we all do. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, and I, exactly. and I just think for, yeah, yeah, yeah. for students, it's important to, to just really get into every, like instead of thinking about your career, mm-hmm. just think about the next photograph. Just think about the photograph you're taking now because yeah. you have one and then one and then one and then one. Yeah. You end up having a body work after a while. And I think you see yeah. that in hindsight. I don't think you, you can aim for it. Realize it. I think you more see it in hindsight. I do. Yeah. Wise words. Wise mm. words. I, I think that's the that's a good end. Good end to the show. Thank God. There. I think Agreed. Yeah. That's now, great. Yeah. Before, I know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> God, that's Pull the plug. Before we we could go on for hours. Um, now, before we go, Greg, we this is this is a part of the show where we personally ask you to recommend two creatives from either the photographic or the video or moving image world to come onto Podlomania and be guests on the show. A bit like you know your e intro to us. And of course, we ask you to get in touch with them and do an e-intro so that we don't get arrested for harassment. Mm. Um, do any spring to mind straight away? I mean, you don't have to commit to this on 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 the recording. I don't know if I could get them, honestly. People I think are really good. One for sure is uh, Dan Winters. Do you know Dan Winters? You yeah. should look up his stuff. Yeah. He's, oh, yeah, he's been... Beautiful. He's yeah. really interesting work. He's a very interesting guy. Very thoughtful. Mm-hmm. He has a number of books out the one that is kind of the one is called uh, The Road to Seeing or Road to Seeing. And it's mm-hmm. like a telephone directory. It's 700 I know, pages. It's, it's a monster. Yeah. Yeah. It's, beautiful. it's yeah. very good. Yeah. It's very, okay. He's a very thoughtful character. In this, and he does have a style in the way that we uh-huh. think of style. But what's interesting about him, he has a very big uh, section, kind of, area that he works in, which is still life. 
And he oftentimes Mm -hmm. builds these little environments or builds the things, constructs them. Mm -hmm. So instead of saying it's a still life of a wine bottle for an ad, it's a still life that he has built for psychology today to express depression. But he's interpreted that. He's a really interesting guy. And he does tons of portraits. I mean, he did a great picture of Ellen Mirren. Amazing. Uh You could look that up. It's great. So he yeah. does those things. Oh, his work and is outstanding. It'd be amazing. The same, but you would say they have the same DNA. Like, like you would probably look and say, oh, that's probably Dan's. But he's yeah. a really good person for sure. And a really okay. lovely guy. Well, that, that sounds awesome. If there's any way, shape or form you can e-intro us, then that would be amazing. Okay, I'll find out about that. Yeah, a good word. That. Yeah. Yeah. And, and another guy who's just great is this guy, Jay Maisel. Not to be confused with Stephen Maisel, who's a fashion photographer. Yeah. Jay Maisel, yeah. M-A-I-S-E-L. He just turned 90. He is fantastic. He's the guy who said, I go out empty and let the world fill me up. And you look, look up his stuff oh, online. Yeah. Yeah. He's just, yeah. he is like the quintessential amateur photographer, like for decades. I'm not kidding you. Everybody who bought like a Nikon or a Canon, whether or not they knew it, they wanted to take these pictures. It's like a reflection. The light on a wall. The sunset. Oh, it's you know, like yeah. the picture of like, Telephone wires at sunset when they're like all lit up, you know, backlit. It's yeah, like yeah, yeah. things that are pictures like, oh, I'd love to have that. Oh, I'd love to shoot that. Oh, yeah. that's so pretty. You know? One of those oh moments. Just really <laughs> lovely. Really. Yeah. And so he'd be he'd be terrific. He do, he does say fuck a lot. I'm sorry. He's from <laughs> That's right. We he's yeah, from man. He's we're from Brooklyn. That. That's like ev- literally that. ev- his alphabet is fucking A, fucking B, fucking C. But he's. <laughs> I think he'll fit right he's, in. He'll fit right in. He's terrific. <laughs> I mean, uh, and there's more, but boy, I, yeah, I think they're great. Yeah. yeah. Well, we'll take more than two. Yeah. You know, we'd have to do that now on the show, yeah. but hey, we'll certainly. I mean, more, you know how it is. Like like some photographers interest. you love and admire, and they're yeah. like completely incoherent. I saw a photographer, <laughs> this, one of the guys I'd mentioned before, when I was a kid, I went and saw him. Two people I'll tell you about. One of them was this guy, Pete Turner, who was great. The color guy, amazing. Yeah. Went to see him mm-hmm. and I was like beside myself to see this guy give a talk. And the interviewer was like, so Pete, I understand that like science fiction is a really big thing. And that kind of imagery, like close encounters, the third kind, things like that really influenced your work. You go, yeah. And that was his answer, <laughs> it. you know, or like, <laughs> or like, I sure did. It was hard sure work. did. That's- I mean, honestly, that kind of stuff. And the guy asked him some long question. And his answer was like, Hey man, I put my pants on one leg at a time. <laughs> right, so <laughs> that was like nothing. And then I saw another photographer. Yeah. Which, Maybe to be fair, we could we, we could do with another short podcast. It would do it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he, he might be perfect. He's, He's done in no longer minutes. here, unfortunately. And then another guy, Elliot Irwin, oh. who's a brilliant photographer. Oh right? yeah, Elliot. Yeah, and his yeah. pictures, yeah. oftentimes, are very humorous. They're really great. He has books on just dogs that are great. Right. I went yeah. to see him, see and him. I was like ready for like stand up comedy. Right. He shows oh, his wow. stuff and it's these pictures. He goes, oh, that was uh, Brussels, 1957. Uh, London, I think in the 60s. <laughs> That's Paris, oh, wow. uh, 1942. Like, that was it. Yeah. And that was gone off the yeah. page. Yeah. That was it. <laughs> so it's <laughs> tough with these podcast things, man. You never know who you're going to get, right? Thanks for coming. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. Well, I mean, look at us. This, this one's still going. You know, this is, no, this I'm is, sorry. This is you hit the, hit the play button with me. It's all over. It is. I haven't even had breakfast yet. <laughs> no chance. Yeah. Yeah, no chance. Chance. Okay, great. Before we wrap, um, wrap up the final statement here, where um, let our audience know where they can find you. Uh, hiding, hiding <laughs> under a rock in this in this room. <laughs> I'm. Uh, my website is gregoryheisler.com. That's yep. it. I, yep. I'm on uh, Instagram, except that my Instagram and I have nothing. My handle on that is eyeball yep. calisthenics. I've seen it. Yeah, and because <laughs> I think that's what it is. You're just like you know, little jumping down, stretching for your eyeballs when you're shooting around. When I, when I yeah. do that and a friend of mine, he said, your Instagram is like waiting for a London bus. There's nothing for two hours and then four in a row. <laughs> it's, true. It. it's true. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. When I first saw that Instagram, I, I wasn't actually hundred percent sure if it was you, yours. No. Or not. <laughs> I was like, and what? I don't feed it. I'm terrible. I'm really like my yeah, website. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Honest to God. I don't think I've updated it in 10 years. I just, okay. I just, <laughs> I just don't like my, I'm, I don't know what to say. Like, my, it's not where my... It's the business side again, isn't it? Kind of. Do you yeah, know? And I just... Yeah. You'd rather be taking pictures. And I sort of know. don't want my pictures out there all the time. Like, I, my proudest thing okay. it, is this book, right? Yeah. I was so yeah. happy to do that. Cause I felt like I was tying a bow around a period in my life and like making mm-hmm. it a thing. 
like an actual thing. And to me, the pictures that go out online, they just got into the ether and that's it. And that's the other thing for your listeners. Make prints of your work Mm -hmm. because unless you have an IT department that migrates your stuff to new platforms every so often, like I have friends who they scan their family pictures and they throw the prints and the negatives away, right? Because they've scanned it now. And the truth is like a hundred years from now, no one will know how to open those. No one's going to be able to see them. The things that will exist will be the prints that you make. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm just saying, and also when you make a print as a photographer, when you make a print as a photographer, it's an absolute. You're saying, this is how I intend my work to look. This is Mm -hmm. the, the way I want you to see it. It's not like subject to the phone or a monitor or size or color balance or yeah. color space or any of that. It's like an absolute representation. In fact, you know the photographer Brett Weston? He was Edward Weston's son. Did some uh, kinds of things. Yeah. Oh, right. At the end of, he passed away. At the end of his career, he burned all of his negatives, all of his life's Whoa. work. Because his thing was, I don't want anyone to print these negatives but me. The final, my legacy is not the negatives. It's these. It's the prints. And it's like, yeah, it's, it's like, you go, dude. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know if yeah, I could do it. Beautiful. Yeah. I know. But but I yeah. get it. I get it. I think it's yeah, 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 I get it. Yeah. And um for our for our listeners, um, you can also find Greg's book, Fifty Portraits, yeah. on Amazon. The link is in the show notes. So if you want to go and look at that and purchase that, uh, which we highly recommend, of course. I recommend it. Um I'm gonna say yeah. no, I'm beautiful saying, book. Beautiful it's, book. it's the photo yeah. book I wanted. Like yeah. photo books yeah. tend to be like ga- gallery exhibition on paper, which is cool. Mm-hmm. And the photographer yeah. really doesn't say anything or somebody interviews them or whatever. Or they're like technical books or they're like, you know, musings, you know, naval musings and stuff like that. And what I really wanted, yeah. like, I want a book from Penn that, mm-hmm. that says what he thinks about the images, what he was thinking when he made them, maybe a little bit about what he used because that's, we all like that. And those yeah, books yeah, don't really exist. And I thought that's what I wanted. And that's why I did this book. It's not like, Here's why my pictures are great. That's it. Like I look at all my pictures yeah. as failures pretty much. I, at home, I don't have any of my right. pictures up on the wall. Because like A, I've already seen them. Like I know what they are. But also yeah. I look at them and I just think, ah, like everyone's like, I, I remember everything I missed or everything that could have been. Yeah. We will do, yeah. So I just yeah. don't yeah. want to look at them. But in the book is a way to kind of get it and send it off. But actually yeah. talking about what, how that picture came about. What's the genesis? Like, what were you thinking? What was the thing? Like mm-hmm. all that as a kind of communicating a thought process, a creative process. And I think, and the book's cheap. It's like 20 bucks. I think I am 40 bucks. It's cheap. So okay. give it away. So I think so. Give it away. So if you buy it, my daughters yeah. will appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. The 50 yeah, just look at the, that you yeah. from that. Yeah. Look in the show notes, folks. That, that link's in there for you to find out. Oh, Amazon, great. Thank and you. And I'll put it up for, uh, for, for .com and .co, .uk. Great. I, I think that's brilliant. I'm just going to do the, the final statement here now. Now, to all our listeners, we just want to thank you for listening to this episode. Um, it's going to be a double episode, this one, because of its length. And I think the content, we, we need to split it there. They'll both go out together, but um, yeah, they'll certainly be there. And remember, if you'd like to help support us to produce and record even more great interviews with some of the world's greatest creative talents, then your support and donations are very much appreciated. And for those that don't know, you can find our donate button on our website over at podlomania.com forward slash donate. Uh, and that can go through, buy us a coffee or through a PayPal link. Very simple. Any pound or dollar or even more, if you're feeling generous and you like it, um, would really go a long way to help keeping the lights on at Podlomania Towers. And remember, if you like this episode and don't want to miss out on new episodes, then please make sure you subscribe to us on your chosen podcast player. We're on over 36 of them in over 36 countries. Oh, 36 countries, I should say. Um, and you can subscribe to the podcast on podlomania.com forward slash subscribe. And remember, you can find us on Apple Podcasts, iTunes Store, Stitcher, Spotify, Podbean, Podlomania, and Amazon as well now. So, um, And please don't forget to give us a like and leave a comment. It helps us in the rankings. But all that aside, Greg, we just want to thank you for yeah, being you so much, the legend and the myth that it's you are. Yeah, it, this is and, fun. I got to say, hey, can I say one other thing? Yes. So during course. the lockdown, I had to teach the classes through Zoom. Right? Oh. Mm-hmm. And the very first class was a portrait class. And I'm looking at 20 pictures, of, you know, on the thing. And I just said, yeah. I'm looking at 20 shitty portraits. <laughs> I just said, like, by next week, I want you to figure out the lighting, the composition, yeah. how close you are. What, like, 
Yeah. Like I'm offended. I'm offended looking at this. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I have. I have Did taken a screenshot. It? I have taken a screenshot of your beautiful lighting that you. Yeah, thanks. Thanks. <laughs> no, but like yeah. at home, I mean, yeah, at home, I made almost you know. like literally a little set, a film set, yeah, of stuff that I thought what they would like that would look cool. Yeah. Would, uh, did Did they totally. change it? Totally. Yeah. Cool. Nice, nice, nice. So did you tell any of them to take the shortcut and go green screen? They did it anyway. Yours is good though. Yours doesn't look like green screen. I think it's fantastic. <laughs> the no, I, I do. I think it looks great. That's fantastic. No, this yeah. was real. It was fun. And I would go back and get objects and bring them up and talk about them and stuff. It's yeah, fun. Yeah. It was fun. Now, I actually love that. Do it. it was a it, it's different experience again. Some people were actually, I thought they'd be disconnected. It was, they were actually more forthcoming. Maybe because they sort of felt safe there. Like people might not speak up in class. Yeah, it was true. actually cool. You're not yeah, wrong. Yeah. I like it. it was good. You're not wrong. That's cool. Anyway. Awesome. Well, thank you, gentlemen. This was super fun. It's been awesome. And Yeah, no, thank you. My goodness. Yeah, it's been fascinating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah certainly a big thanks from us. We'd, we'd like to carry on talking to you for lots more about lots of other things. But obviously today is not the day because you've got a schedule to keep to. Yeah, three minutes. But th- I just want to say you guys are really a lot of fun. This was fun. I've done things like this a little bit before. This was fun. This, this was cool. I, like I want to come over and have a beer with you guys. It'd be really oh, not yeah, be great. The door is the door is yeah, always awesome. open. You're more than pleasure welcome. Pleasure to meet you both. You're more than welcome. No, you guys are cool. This was super fun. Great. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, and thanks to everyone for listening. And we'll catch you in the next episode. Okay. Thanks for that. Bye.